the October 7 attacks, right? And the Israeli mm-hmm. onslaught on Gaza. Almost four months after the attack, military experts still argue whether it was let it happen incident or a major intelligence failure based on the premise that Israel heavily relied on AI to collect uh, data from Gaza to foresee and abort similar surprise attacks. I would like to hear your take on that. On which camp are you? Is it a let it happen event uh, or it was an intelligence failure based on the over-reliance on AI? Yeah, I think it was a a let it happen style event. And, Hmm. um, you know, there were a lot of comparisons made by Israeli officials at the time saying this is our 9-11, right? And for those that have researched seriously, September 11th, 2001 in New York City, uh, you were, you know, people that have looked into that are aware that the same sophisticated system, not the same, but sophisticated defense systems in the U.S. all just happened not to be working that day. How convenient. And they were tied to a series of software companies, P-Tech, for example, among others, uh, that had ties to, you know, intelligence um, and involved in, in various things that were very suspect. Just like October 7th, there was advanced knowledge and insider trading taking place before the attacks themselves, so showing that someone uh, with money and means knew that those attacks were going to happen before they did, so foreknowledge, right? Um, and then uh, you have to consider, too, that what was going on in Israel before October 7th, extreme protest against Netanyahu in Israel over the judicial reform issue. How do you bring together a divided populace, particularly in Israel, you unite them with war, a common enemy, a common threat. Um, and so by, you know, uh, I mean, you know, in Israel, a lot of people say that Americans are the most propagandized populace. I would say it's uh, Israel is uh, definitely up there, if not above the U.S., because, you know, the Ministry of Education is increasingly uh, is, is often run by the same people that also like have top posts in the Ministry of Defense. Naftali Bennett, for example, a good example of the overlap there. And there's a lot of, uh, you know, Israelis in in many kindergartens and, you know, early education are basically taught that, you know, you live in an insecure place because you're Jewish and people are going to come after you. And, you know, we're a a persecuted populace and all of this stuff. And Israel, since its inception in the late 40s, has been under um, a state of emergency continuously in its entire existence. It's never not been in a state of emergency. Um, And so this whole like instantaneous wartime footing is sort of ingrained in in this particular population and has been um, for some time. And so a way to stop, I think in my opinion, October 7th was so convenient in that it stopped a lot of those problems for Netanyahu and then allowed him to sort of, um, you know, unify the the issues, uh, the the different factions against him, essentially, and then push for longstanding objectives of, of his, which include things like ethnic cleansing of uh, what remains of Palestine, um, and you know, a, a greater Israel ambitions and regional wars with various nations. Um, it, for the the goal of you know greater Israel territorial acquisition, um, and Netanyahu in his current government is allied with figures that want to actualize that as well, not just Netanyahu, and have been a lot more vocal about those those goals than Netanyahu himself. It's particularly wow. the greater Israel aspect of yeah. it. But Netanyahu more recently has said things like Israeli Israel needs to control from the river to the sea. And all of that, meaning like all of the territory and has, you know, even his officials ever since the, um, you know, the conflict in Gaza has begun, has been very open about uh, the goal is to essentially uh, remove Gazans from Gaza (laughs) and wanting to send them to the Sinai, resettle them in the Sinai and all of these other (laughs) agendas that have been developed, uh, you know, well before October 7th. you know, my colleague Ian Davis uh, wrote a very uh, excellent article breaking down all of the supposed intelligence failures of October 7th um, yeah. and how it is, is very much, uh, you know, it seems to have been intentional. Um, the AI aspect, did AI fail? Um, yes, uh, maybe in some cases AI does fail because there is no facial recognition AI algorithm on the market that's 100% accurate. Yeah. 
Um, and there's some countries like the UK, for example, where they, there have been scandals essentially about how inaccurate facial recognition AI is. However, Israel is a market leader in this for defense. They have used Palestine as a test bed for this technology for years and years and years and years. There is no more surveilled populace in the entire world than the Palestinians. So for them to not know this stuff, and it's not just the border fence, the AI mm -hmm. failed on the border fence. I mean, the, every everything on their phones and all of that, the, the surveillance against Palestinians is just unprecedented. The fact that they would not know it was happening is absurd, especially when you consider that uh, more or less allied nations, quasi allies, I would sort of put Egypt under its current leadership. Yes. in that category. Um, they warned Israel that this was going to happen before it happened. Yes. And those warnings were ignored. Mm. It's very similar to a lot of stuff that happened before 9-11. And of course, for Israeli officials to say this is our 9-11 is pretty significant when you consider that, you know, Israeli intelligence had its own documented role in what happened on 9-11 in the United States. Not saying they were the only ones involved, because obviously U.S. intelligence and you had the Saudis and Pakistani Started. intelligence services involved to degrees. Um but it, you know, 9/11 was something that was orchestrated for the purpose of justifying war around the world under the guise of combating terrorism. And yes. Israel, at this point in time that October 7th happened, needed some sort of galvanizing uh, event to sort of paper over the divisions that were threatening to split Israeli society and and make Netanyahu a less polarizing figure for the purpose of pushing specific policy objectives forward that are longstanding goals, not just of Netanyahu, but the religious right extremist groups with which he is allied in his current government. So um, the AI um, explanation, AI failure explanation reminds me a lot of what CIA officials and military officials said about 9-11 after it happened. It was a failure of imagination. It was hmm. just incompetence. Um, you know, oh, yes, all our systems failed. And routinely, um, governments like this uh, want you to think they're incompetent so that you don't realize what they're actually doing and what their goals and objectives really are. Because you're just, oh, they're so stupid. Uh, let's put another guy in power. Um, yeah. I mean, you're ultimately, uh, I don't know. I mean, I think it's, it's, it's just part of the deception to write it all off as incompetence, um, yeah. at the end of the day. And, um, if there's anything, uh, I know after reporting on a, for a very long time on Israeli, on um, Israeli defense uh, industry, Israeli AI and, you know, defense tech companies, it's that, uh, they know what Palestinians are doing and saying. They mm. test it all there. And the idea that they would not uh, have any sort of forewarning. If if Egyptian intelligence could pick it up, Israeli intelligence picked it yes, up. Yes, I agree. And there's been a lot of, uh, you know, in recent weeks even, Israeli mainstream media has been forced to acknowledge that the official narratives propagated by Israeli officials in the immediate aftermath of October 7th were erroneous. How many of those civilians were actually killed by the IDF as opposed yes. to Hamas? Um and there's been efforts to prevent documentation from coming out from the highest levels of, of the Israeli military and intelligence communities. That to me suggests there's a cover up. People knew the insider trading stuff is also pretty damning. Um, and again, I, you know, I think it comes down. I, I would ask the same people that are saying, is, was this incompetence because of over-reliance on AI? How do they feel about 9-11? Was that a failure of imagination to you too? Um, you know, I mean, I think these, these types of events that are so um, impactful um, in terms of, you know, the policy solutions that are forced on the populace later when they're, you know, in fear and panicking, um, oh, we're being invaded. Oh, look at the incursion Hamas did and they took hostages. When was the last time this happened? It's been decades. Oh, uh -huh. um, we can't allow a Palestinian state now and all of this stuff. I mean, these are things that Netanyahu has always wanted, you know, yeah. uh, and I think people are naive to assume that he wouldn't 
uh, endanger Israeli lives in pursuit of his policy goals and his ability to stay in power. This is a man who will kill literally anyone to get what he wants. Um, he and, and to think yeah. that he wouldn't sacrifice Israeli citizens um, as part of that, I think, is naive, especially when you consider, too, I thought it was interesting as well that um, apparently one of the um, events, the music festival that was targeted as part of October 7th were a bunch of Israelis that were very... Um, mm. um, how how should I phrase this? That they were very supportive of peace efforts with the Palestinians, um, and that is the class of Israelis that Netanyahu and his ilk hate the most. Yeah, 